nice, let's have a nice sit. All right, meme review. Yeah, we're uh, we're recording. Okay, meme meme review, meme meme review. Okay, we sound good. Okay, so. ready, set. Hello again. We've been gone for a week because Stuart was uh, Stuart was gone. Yeah, yeah. I am. But but I've come back with a new topic. I've come back with a new topic, Stuart. Are yeah. humans inherently good? All right. So, let's get that down to brass tacks. The answer is good and evil are all relative, and it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, this all right, was that's a short for the episode. show, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Support us on Patreon, on Kickstarter, on Indiegogo, on all the ways in which you can give us money. We don't have any of those things, Stuart. Well. It's a joke, Caleb. <laughs> We're not going to accept money from strangers. My Fuck mom yeah, said no. <laughs> yeah, we are. Eventually. Eventually. I don't know. We'll see. So, Stuart. Yes. Are, do you really want to talk about that topic? or? Uh, I, I thought it would be a funny intro. Okay. Okay. I, I, I do a lot of things because I think they're funny, and then I don't know how to stop. See, okay. So, uh, let's see. So, how was being gone? It was good. I went to Mexico. Mexico. You're right. Uh, You're... Puerto Vallarta, to be uh, specific. That was the. The city. port of Vallarta. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how raunchy can I get? I mean, like, it's our podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We're on school grounds. I don't really think that matters, because, uh... Okay. But, like, you know, you know. Okay. Well, I made out with someone. Yeah. For money. Did they pay you, or did you pay them? Well, I was given money by a person to give to a stripper to make out with me. Yeah. Okay. Isn't capitalism awesome? I love capitalism. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, where do you put all economic uh, things? Like your, uh, your communisms, your capitalisms, your socialisms, your... Are we talking in an ideal world or in like, an, uh, like a realistic world? Okay, so you know humans, how humans. they're inherently yeah. evil? Okay, so humans. Yeah. Yeah, so as humans put it. So I'd say that capitalism is pretty functional. Yeah, it because functions because the margin for corrupt, the the margin for being corrupt is really high, but the margin for how much corruption you can have in that system and it still kind of functions for the greater good. Yeah, is relatively high. I think with all economic uh, forms, corruption is inherent. Inherent. It's an inevitable fact. Of having money, yeah. So now, so you just have to rate them on how so how capital- well they can function for the greater majority. Yes. Yeah, so with- capitalism makes it so corruption is not as bad as it could be. Yeah, because in a corrupt capitalist system, yeah, you might be getting paid twelve dollars twelve dollars a week to uh, make dresses. Yeah. But I'm still getting paid twelve dollars a week to make dresses because there's nobody who isn't going to accept a paycheck for making dresses. Exactly. However, there needs to be some form of governmental. Yeah. You need uh, guidelines. Yeah, like uh, you need a you need a little few spicinesses of socialism so that you can have minimum wages and uh, good business practices, and so that people don't get their hands chopped off and still have to work the next day. Yeah. Or else they're fired. Or else they're fired. However, communism. I'd say communism in terms of how much corruptness it can deal with is probably the worst. Yeah. Because by the time your communist society has become corrupt, like the the pop Stalin. Yeah, Stalin. Stalin. It's a wrap for y'all. It's a wrap. Uh, Stalin has all the money. Yeah. Even though everyone is supposed to have all the money. And uh, now you don't have the food. 
Yeah, and now no one has the food, and all forms of uh, the food are owned by the government. Progressive, uh, and uh, like uh, there's no room for like moving forward in terms of technology because you kind of there's no you can't go forward without food. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, You need food to go on, and you need competition to go on, and everyone is just like, well, might as well just uh, just sit on my butt all day because no one's gonna tell me. That I have to work more than uh, a Strutska over there. Strutska, yeah. And there's there's no yeah there's no competition, and so there's no way that I can make more money. So why would I try to make more money? Exactly. So, so that was a good conversation. I I, good. I feel it was nuanced and uh, better than anything BuzzFeed has ever put in. Uh, put out. Stuart, we talked about BuzzFeed last episode. Well, yeah, but I got a... Rep- That's the title. Well, <laughs> it was the title, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was the title. I'm just saying we need a good linear progression in this podcast where we reference things from previous episodes so people who listen to all of them can feel a sense of joy in their meaningless lives where they choose to listen to us for 30 minutes a week. Yeah. I'm sorry, everyone who listens to us. Yeah. Artists. It's our bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Stuart, now that we've had the deep, heavy-handed uh, talk about uh, systems of government. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Okay. So, mentally, I'm all right. Okay. Physically, I'm all right. It, uh, spiritually, I'm all right. In terms of everything around me, I should be all right, but I still feel like they could be better. Stuart, I tried to lead this to a less heavy conversation. Oh, uh, okay. I'll be positive. Let me think. Let me think. No, let me don't, think. don't force positivity. Just puppies. I wanna... Puppies. <laughs> Stuart. Uh, I... What's your favorite kind of puppy? Have you seen a German Shepherd puppy? Yeah. They're adorable. <laughs> Have you ever seen a Pitbull puppy? Yeah. They're all like wrinkly and like Yeah, but they're not they're not German Shepherds. Yeah, you, you, you got a point. How do you feel about Borzois? Borzois? Yeah. Do you I, know what whippets are? Uh, I know what whippets are. Have you seen a whippet? Uh, are we still talking about dogs or are we talking about drugs? Not, uh, <laughs> don't do whippets. Don't do a whippets. A whippet is a dog. Oh, yeah, I've never seen a whippet dog before. Okay. Do you know what greyhounds look like? Yeah. Yeah, great. The really fast ones? Yeah. It's kind of like that, but lankier. What? And a borzoi is one of those, but with long fur. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's like the... That's an interesting combination, because how can They're... you be more lanky than a greyhound? That's like... They're sticks. Stick horses. <laughs> They're stick horses plus fur. Fur. With fur. Yeah. They're really great. That, that sounds like a good talk. How do you feel about corgis? Like, Cor- corgis. like Queen's corgis. I, like, to be real honest, I think they're kind of, they're, they're, they're bordering on abomination territory. Oh, well, yeah, they make, evolutionary, they make no sense. Yeah, they're kind of they're kind of useless. Yeah, because they got real short legs and kind of fat sausagey bodies. So yeah. like, why? Yeah, they're like the pandas of dogs. No, pandas are great, but pandas evolutionarily makes sense. Did really? No, no, no. Okay, they, okay. They have yeah. to like eat for eight hours of the day. Okay, but if pandas lived in northern Russia. That, like, their evolutionary things might be a problem, but since there's really nothing to eat them in Japan. But corgis, the, uh, they make sense being part of the queen's court. Okay, yeah. They, they thrive in queen's court scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> this got really heavy again. And I... <laughs> okay. But back to pandas. Back to pandas. Do you know, like, how hard it is to get pandas to reproduce? It's pretty hard because they like, don't give a shit. Yeah. They just don't. Yeah. They just sit and they eat and they sleep. Yeah. They're like 
Oh, wait. I, I'm not going to take it there. That went way too far in my head. <laughs> well, Japanese people. <laughs> no, they're like toddlers. <laughs> they're like to- I think we should not try to get toddlers yeah. to reproduce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Uh, but, okay, so Japan. Japan. They're having a bit of a population crisis right now. Yeah, like how uh, the population is aging and no one wants to re- reproduce. <laughs> yeah, because they're all like, hey, let's have jobs instead of families. And waifus. Waifus. <laughs> Stuart, who's your waifu? Uh, you I have a husbando. Family. Husbando. Yeah. Didn't we talk, did we talk about this last week? I think it was the week before that. Well, for the record. No, I think I was making a joke about, like, Splatoon or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You said you have a thing for a squid kid from Splatoon. <laughs> because I wanted to lead, it, lead into Smash Bros. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, my husbando is Sidon from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because he's just the greatest. Was Zora. he Sidon? Uh, he's like the Zora prince. And he always smiles. And he's like, Ugh. you know. Ugh. Yeah. He's like, Which one of the Zora? Uh, he's like the hammerhead shark one with the awesome smile and the oh, awesome body. Yeah. yeah. Are you a furry? N- uh, no, I'm a slimy. <laughs> it's a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Shape of Water? <laughs> I haven't. Me neither. <laughs> uh, so that guy's your waifu. Why? Or husbandu? Uh, because he's... Husbandu. He has a great smile, and he has a great personality, and he just helps out Link in times of need, and he's he's just a stand-up guy, and he's always positive. He he knows how to look on the positive times of life. You okay. Know? But who's your waifu? Let's see, my waifu. Uh, let's see. I don't really consider these things. Mm, um, I, I guess, like... I don't know. I don't really have one. You don't really have one. Yeah, no. uh, would you have? Uh, would you consider the advent of multiple waifus polygamy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, top ten waifus in no specific order. Uh, just, just name off waifus you like. Um. Uh. Sarah Palin. Okay, next one. Sarah Palin. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Did you watch Attack on Titan? Uh, Not really. I watched like five episodes. Did you watch Soul Eater? Yes. Uh, What about the main cast from Soul Eater? Any ones that you were just like, oh, they're cool. I mean, like, not really. They're, yeah. All the characters are kind of really lame and flawed, and I think that's what makes the show work. Yeah. Because all the characters are so flawed that they're borderline unlikable. Except. That is a good description. Yeah. Of... But like, they're trying to do they're trying to do good things, I guess. Yeah. So that makes them redeemable. But to isn't some the, but isn't they're trying to do good things? I guess kind of the point of the show. Yeah, but a lot of the times they do fail. I like it. I do. It's yeah, it, it's a good dynamic. How do you like literature? literature? Like, how do you feel about literature? I feel like there's a lot of things in the literature universe that are really hyped up and don't need to be. Uh, an example? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. I do recognize his... I recognize that he made up approximately a third of the English words that are original to the English language. However... He created the word eyeball. Yeah. But I just don't think his work is that great. Okay. You don't like Hamlet? Hamlet is like his... uh, Like, when you say Shakespeare, people think of Hamlet as, like, the best thing he did. Hamlet is like Sigmund Freud's take on... uh, Take on... Uh, what was that? What was that one? The Lion King. No. <laughs> Hamlet is Sigmund Freud's take on uh, Macbeth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I that is a valid description of yes. the play Hamlet. Because the son kills his father, and that's basically that Sigmund Freud. You know, there's just a giant big red button. 
labeled Oedipus. <laughs> Press it. Yeah, I don't like Shakespeare. And okay. All of his th- all of his things that I've uh, I like Shakespeare, but I do believe he's overrated. Yeah. Uh, let's see who else is really overrated. Um. I feel like uh, To Kill a Mockingbird is overrated. I haven't actually read that one. It's it, it's a good book, but it's just literary. There are better books from American history. Yeah. Like I think I like Mark Twain more than To Kill a Mockingbird. But To Kill a Mockingbird is in every gosh darn school curriculum yeah. ever. I haven't actually read To Kill a Mockingbird. You haven't? No. I mean, I would say consider yourself lucky, but I mean, I, I guess, I mean, it's fine. I think the one I read last year was uh, Hayden, Hayden Caulfield. Oh, Caulfield. Uh, Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the Rye, yeah. That's a garbage book. Yeah, I mean. And it's in every single school. Oh, for sure. That is one I haven't read. Yeah, it's like. Two, 300 pages of absolutely nothing is what that book is about. I mean, it's basically like a, a diary of a depressed teenager. Maybe that's why I don't like it. Because I... <laughs> you're like, uh, you're critiquing it because you feel it's like, almost like the uncanny valley. It's not believable. You're like, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, I get the whole like, wanting to do something with your life thing, but, like, I feel like Holden's just kind of... He's street smart, but the book doesn't portray him. Like, he doesn't do street smart people things. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ah, J.D. Salinger. What a fucking... Why? (laughs) (laughs) So, what were we talking about? Um, we talked about literature and we talked about flawed characters trying to do the right thing. It just all leads back into really heavy topics today, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, but I I feel like that is our job as part of the Trash Fire podcast. Yeah. To make everything a clustered trash fire of yeah. positive things. You need to burn everything. Yeah. You need to throw everything into the trash fire and burn it. Did you read Fahrenheit 451? I have not. Hmm. They're making an HBO movie about it. 451 it, Fahrenheit isn't all that hot. Uh, it's the burning temperature of paper. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, but uh, that was when it was calculated in like the 30s, so it's like not right. And so it, the book title is flawed, so ha! <laughs> Ray Bradbury, you're stupid. Ray Bradbury, you're a flawed character. <laughs> you're a flawed character. I just literally an- analyzed an author. Boom. Quick maths. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got any topics, too? Space. Space. The uh, final frontier. No. Okay. Uh, next one on the list. No, we can talk about space. Oh, oh, oh. I don't agree. I don't. I don't like the Final Frontier. Oh, you, you don't like the Star Trek vibe of it. Yeah. Okay. So space. Space. Uh, it's expanding. It's expanding. Always. Always. So, uh, like. Redshift, blue shift. I remember that. From... Redshift and blue shift. Yeah. I I don't know why we were learning about that in chemistry. Because it's uh, it's photons. Oh. And photons but are. Photons aren't chemistry. They're light. Yeah, but they're also highly related to the way atoms work. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it, uh, you use it to calculate uh, atomical structure of stars. Uh, uh, not atomic structure, of compound, and makeup. Com- yeah, the makeup of stars. Also, it uh, he, it's, a lot, it's a lot to do with electrons. Yeah, I don't like it, electrons. I think we should just ignore them, along with global warming. In the roundness of the earth. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The earth is flat. Exactly. <laughs> There's my waifu earth chum. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I saw this picture the other day. <laughs> I showed you my I showed you my Bermuda triangle, now answer me. Yeah, that, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. 
That was good. This podcast used to be really structured. Yeah, uh, but I feel like we're... It's more pure now. Yeah, I feel like we're less awkward than the first episode, but yeah. still really bad. Yeah, I don't really talk on talk on talk a lot to people who aren't my friends. Wow, I don't really <laughs> talk a lot. Ah, <laughs> okay, talking. We talked about this. We talked about the uh, subject of talking. Yeah, we did. What about public speaking? Public speaking is uh, literally my worst nightmare. Really? It's basically like if karaoke were ten times as bad. Have you done karaoke? No, but it terrifies <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. I, I never really had that public speaking fear. My, my fears are more, um, what's the word? Uh, disappointing everyone around me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel, like, when I'm public speaking, I feel detached from my audience. And whatever I say won't really matter in the end. But when I'm talking to people face-to-face, that's when it gets scary. Yeah. I mean, like, I can talk to a person, kind of. I'm not very good at it. Yeah, I, I, I think I do all right. It's just I always fear that, like, if I say the wrong thing, they'll hate me. And then everyone else will find out I'm a fraud. Dark Places, the podcast. Dark. We should change the name because uh, <laughs> we are. We've got some competition now. Yeah. So apparently, uh, there is a, another Trash Fire podcast yeah, on YouTube. I watched like the first five minutes, and I guess they're uh, they're ex fire or they're professional firefighters. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I just saw the logo and I was like, huh. but I mean, for uh, if you're listening other trash fire podcast we accept you yeah we're, we're, we're don't want any conflict uh, we'll give you a listen you can give us a listen maybe we can collab and we can talk about depressing stuff and about the exp- uh, ever expansion of space and you can talk about house fires and then we'll learn something yeah I'll learn how to be a real boy <laughs> have, uh, have you ever been in a house fire Caleb or yeah. a, uh, any sort of fire I really haven't yeah, I I always feel like we have fire drills. But... I feel like everything in society is like, yeah, you got to be careful of fire. Yeah. But like, to be real honest, fire is not as much of a problem in my life as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like we should have car accident drills because those happen way more. I feel like. Yeah, but what do you do in a car? Car accidents happen faster than you could remember your drill training. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, combat or car car uh, car accident drills would be basically like combat training. <laughs> would you ever join the military? Fuck no. Would you? Uh, what would you do to? Uh, would you avoid the draft? I would probably dodge the draft. Yeah. Uh, what is your method of do- dodging the draft? Uh, well, see, I would show up. I would show up, and they're gonna be like, "Yeah, you're drafted, kid," and then I'm gonna be like. Can I get a psyche valve? <laughs> and then they'd be like, "Oh, Ooh, yeah, that's a good one." Uh, I've I've like met with the therapist once, and then I had like a antidepressants once when I was eight. But since then, nothing really. I'd probably cut off three toes. Three toes? Yeah. I mean, that's the way it used to be, right? During World War Two. If you lost three toes, you would. Or at Korea and Vietnam. Uh, yeah, I guess. You couldn't really fight with three toes. Three toys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, you, I could just... I could or maybe I should stab out one of my eyes. And then, even if I did get drafted, at least I'd be the coolest guy with an eye patch. Yeah. It would be really good for sniping, just like... Yeah. No, it wouldn't really be. Oh. Because you would lose depth, depth perception That's and right. close-range combat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, see, the thing the thing about me is I find the idea of combat very exciting. Yeah. It's like, I, it's kind of... It's, but I don't want some man in a White House telling me what to do. Yeah, I wanna, I'm, I'm bad at the whole taking orders thing. Yeah, I want to be in combat because I want to be in combat. Which is why I'm going to become a hitman. There you go. And that is Caleb's number one biggest dream. Yeah. It's, like, hitmen, they don't need to public speak. They don't need to do karaoke. 
I need to talk to somebody every two weeks or so, and then they wire me money, and I kill someone. Yeah. And that's how my job works. Okay, so you saw Suicide Squad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just a little puke in the mouth, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did you feel about Will Smith's portrayal of a comic book hitman? I thought it was stupid. I think I like Deadshot, but I don't like Will Smith. I don't like Will Smith's Deadshot. I don't like whatever the directors and writers of Suicide Squad's Deadshot. I don't like the yeah, DCU's like... Deadshot. Yeah. Deadshot is a cool guy. Deadshot's really cool because he like he's a cool dude. Yeah, and like in Injustice, yeah, uh, you know that fighting game. That's yeah. Deathstroke, not Deadshot. Oh wait, I... they're two different people. Well, yeah, but isn't that uh, that shot in? It might he might be in the new one, but you were Deathstroke and yeah. Well, yeah, I, I knew Deathstroke was. Uh, I know of him because uh, Deadpool is just a parody of him. No, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, because Deathstroke is a is a what's his name, like Slade Wilson. Yeah, and then was, Wade Wilson. <laughs> no, Slade Wilson is uh is known as Slade. Which is why nobody knows him as Deadshot. Yeah. He was on the Teen Titans. <sighs> Teen Titans or Teen Titans Go? We don't talk about Teen I don't talk about Teen Titans Go. But, Stuart. Yes. I think it's actually time that we would be wrapping up. No. I know. Okay. I was enjoying today. Yeah, this, today was good. We haven't, we haven't, it, it was good to take like a couple weeks off. Yeah. Yeah. But now we can get back into the grind. Yeah. Back into the grind. We have a working computer to record on. That's And that's all you need. Yeah. Also a recording booth. All right. This has been the Trash Fire Podcast, week four. My name is Stuart Richardson. My name is Kayla Wilson. And you're watching the Disney Channel. I'll send some sound effects there. <laughs> <laughs>